Okay, so we are now on the second interactive notebook page. So if you do not have this printed, then if you are able to print this, please pause the video and do so. Um, when you are cutting this out, you guys can see that you're going to trim around this outer edge and then you're going to cut right along this dotted line so that you are able to fold these pieces back to create like a flap so that you can write information about each of these different four categories that we're going to talk about in this video. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and pause this video. Uh, if you are unable to print, then what you can do is just create. So you won't have the flaps, but you can create like a just four, basically like four large boxes. And then you'll want to label each of those. So if you need to pause this video, go ahead and do that now. And then return once you are ready to jump in and get started. Okay. So I feel like in fourth grade that we, we do a good job explaining like the difference between a chemical and a physical change. And we're really good at understanding that a physical change means that a substance is not formed. And in a chemical change, we know that a new substance is formed. So let's start with chemical changes and let's identify what we already know that An entirely new substance is formed. I feel like this is the part we know, and this is the part that we can kind of rattle off as like the definition pretty easily. But then we may know that these four are definite examples, such as burning, cooking, decaying, and rusting. But sometimes I feel like in fourth grade, we struggle to understand why, why those are examples. And what are some real concrete examples? Like when burning occurs, what do they mean by a new substance is formed? So that's what we're going to talk about today in this video. So let's jump in. We're going to begin with burning. So I'm going to flap or flip this over. And I might even write the word burning here just to remind myself that that's what we're referring to. And if you need to pause this video at any time, you can. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so we can see. So I in this video, I want to give some examples, right? So let's talk about like wood in a fire. Wood in fire. We're just going to like simplify this. Draw an arrow. Okay, so what new substance forms? Well, it produces a couple different things. Ash smoke, and gas. So again, those are your entirely new substances that are formed, for example, when you're burning wood in a fire. Now, what about like the gasoline we put in cars? These chemical changes happen in cars as gasoline burns and then what happens when it burns it makes your car move right so <laughs> moving another good example that we can talk about might be coal and when it's burned in like a power plant so coal burned in a power plant And we know that that's a chemical change that occurs. And what it does is it produces electricity. I'll write it down here. So I'm not trying to squeeze it in. Electricity. Wow. The next one that we want to talk about is rusting. So I know that many of you probably know what rust is. You know what it looks like, right? It's that kind of reddish brownish color that might appear. And maybe you know that like when you put something outside and it gets wet and then it might stay wet, then it might rust if it's a metal. But actually really what we want to know, let's put the word rusting here, is that that is a chemical change 
that occurs as it reacts with water and the oxygen that's in water. So rust forms when iron, so there's your metal, and then that's your chemical change right there, the rust. When iron is in the presence, fancy. of water. The iron reacts with the oxygen in the water yes there is oxygen in water and it forms rust, so to form rust. And again, it's that change in color that indicates that a chemical change has occurred. And again, if you need to pause the video, you can do so now so that you can get caught up. Next, we're gonna go on to cooking and then finally talk about decaying. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold these over. And I'm gonna kind of move this over just a little bit. And let's talk about cooking. So for example, they gave us this picture of an egg, right? And we know that a physical change might just be like cracking the egg open and leaving it with like the egg white and the egg yolk and then the like broken egg shell. But once we begin to cook it, then a new substance is formed. So an egg cooked changes color and texture. And again, we know that those changes in the physical properties of matter indicate that a chemical change has happened. If we see a change in color or odor, let's talk about another example. What about like veggies and meat on a grill? You know when you're grilling your veggies and your meat and you start to get like that nice brown color? Well, that's a change in color. That indicates that a new substance is formed on the outer side of your vegetable or your meat, and that indicates a chemical change. What about putting toast in a toaster? Or bread, I guess I should have put bread in a toaster. <laughs> right, doesn't it start to get that like crispy browning on the outside? A new substance has formed. Brown indicates color change. And doesn't the texture also change? It went from being like this soft, kind of mm, fluffy slice of bread to now a texture change. Now it's kind of like rough. The last one we wanna talk about is, oh wait, there's one more thing. When you're cooking, what do you often notice every time you're cooking? And it kind of goes along with all three of these, especially if you're baking. A pleasant smell. Yeah, that's a big one. So again, a change in odor indicates a chemical change. Let's talk about the last one, decaying. <laughs> While we're on that idea of change in odor, when things start to decay, they release a gas and that produces another odor. However, it's not so like pleasant. It's actually kind of gross. So decaying, some examples of decaying might be like if you look in your refrigerator, you might see um, some like fruits or vegetables. 
so fruits and veggies, and you know that they're decaying, and you know that a chemical change has happened because there's this new substance that's formed, and you know where I'm going with this. It is called mold. So fruits and veggies can decay, and mold is produced. Right, you hear mom, she's in there in the um, refrigerator cleaning out the vegetable drawer and she's like, oh crud, here goes all the vegetables. I wasted all that money and now they're covered in mold. Another example, let's see here. <laughs> we know that when plants and animals die, they're breaking down. And this one's kind of you know, a little more sad to talk about, but when plants and animals die. They decay or break down. And then some of those like changes that you might notice is that a gas is released. causing odors, typically not very like pleasant. You will also notice the change in color. Okay, if you need to get caught up, you can. You can pause this video, but just to kind of recap real quick, I'm gonna close these. So we know that an entirely new substance is formed. We've talked and we've given some really specific examples, but we know that some signs of a chemical change, just to kind of like recap, are change in color, an odor, which we know is a smell, is produced. Sometimes they produce heat or light. All right, so that wraps up video two with examples of chemical changes.